Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got somebody never done before. So what we've got down here here is Hobby 2000's Rebox of the Hasegawa uh, F4C in 172nd scale. Now Hobby 2000 do do a lot of reboxes, but from various manufacturers. So I wouldn't get tied down to thinking they're always Hasegawa reboxes, some of things, and also they do a little bit of their own. So they're one of these companies which takes the best, or certainly does the various kits that they can get their hands on, reboxes them, but then obviously they add their own little spin to it. So as you'll see in here, what we actually get is a mask set, um, and obviously some very nice decals and things like that. And also they tend to pick sort of certain subjects. For this one we've got down in here, we've got the Robin Olds uh, series as well. So this is his F4C, they do another one, I think it's the D as well. Basically it's the same kit, but obviously it's the F4D version instead. Anyway, as you can see, Pretty simple, but very effective sort of uh, box art down here on the front. We've got a little bit obviously about Robin Olds himself uh, with uh, Scat down there as well, very famous Phantom, and the weathering on it is absolutely brilliantly uh, one to do. Okay, so you've got your kit number for this one is 72027. And we've got a little bit more down there about plastic and what to do with it. Okay, so in the box we find technically a repop of uh, Hasegawa kit. So this is what this is. So we'll look at this one in a moment. As I say, it's a very nice one. Also in the box here, we get uh, the, pop that down there. We've got the sheet. Oh, that's all right. Okay, so we've got decals. And we've got, as we said before, we've got that, which we'll look at, which is your mask set. And then we've got the standard Hasegawa to the T instruction. So it literally is just a, uh, a copy of their instructions, how they do it. So we'll go through this one now. So usual thing, seat, cockpit going in there. We've got decals as well, which are gonna make up for your side walls and various things like that, okay? And then obviously you've got your forward fuselage assembly, so normal thing, cockpit goes in, and we've got your two halves along the side of it, okay? Then you're moving right the way down, and you're gonna be mating this one up. To be honest, I have built this kit, and it's one of those ones where if you take your time, and line this up nice down in here, you will end up with actually quite a nice fit and all the rest of it, okay? Usual thing, there's a couple of little things you need to take care of. So in here, you've got the uh, in-flight refueling, which would be the sort of boom and basket, uh, sorry, the basket and the uh, uh, probe effect. So obviously you're gonna fill that particular panel line because that's where the probe would come out. So that needs to go. So there is some little changes you can make on this one. Another one just to be taken care of as well is up here where you're actually joining on the actual intakes onto this. Anybody who's ever built a Phantom of the Hasegawa rear will know they can be a little bit problematic, but spending a little bit of time in there, just 10 minutes test fitting, a little bit of sanding and everything else like that should ensure you don't really need any filler or anything else as it goes on. It does follow a panel line, so that does make it a little bit easier, but if you've got a step, obviously it's very noticeable. So take your time mating in this one one in the front and then these coming in but again spending a little bit of time on here will save you filler rescribing you know sanding and all the rest of it so you can get away from it as I've done in the past uh, without using anything and it's just been a perfect drop-in fit but it does take a little bit of work to get that in there tail planes going on there and again it's quite modular as you know the Phantom so you've got different tops of the tails with the radar warning receivers on there so obviously you've got that one being fitted down in there as well Another little area that can be a little bit problematic, I'm not going to lie to you because having built this kit quite a few times, is the wing section of how it marries up. So again, make sure you put down these uh, and get them all down in there first, okay, and put them on, then add it onto the wing. I have tried it both ways, but to be honest, there's not a lot in it, so I won't worry. You have got to open up the holes, so make sure you do it there as well. But again, don't immediately come in with glue, marry this up, see how it goes. And to be honest, this seam along the front here, when it goes up to the front, is the one you want to play with. Sometimes they take a little bit of height just out of this bit of plastic here, and that will ensure a nicer fit and more level fit as it goes on from the actual forward fuselage to the rest of it, okay? So to say, spend a little bit of time, play with it, you can go through it and get it sorted like that. Gear fee and fitted on there, it's pretty much standard as we know, so that's all going on there literally like that, okay? And then onto the other side, we've got the actual outer, I think a 600. Uh, Canon tanks on those ones, not too sure, but I think they were 600s on the outside. And obviously you've got the center ones being fitted down into here and then being fitted these in. And again, because this is the Air Force version, you have a slightly different panel. So you need to fill these panels. That's normally where the bridle would be hooked up for the catapult launch would be down here at the bottom. So you do need to take care of those. And there's a couple of other little nicks just to take out as well, okay? So 
just say, just paying a little bit of attention on these ones. Another little area is the actual uh, electronics cooling scoops, which go down on the front here as well. Again, a little bit of test fitting in there, have a look, and you can get that one in there pretty much no problem at all without much to work. But to be honest with you, it's quite easy just to sand and blend and go through the motions of that one. Then we have our marking. So we've got that fantastic uh, Southeast Asia sort of camo on this one. Not too sure about the colors they're using, obviously, but obviously it's just printed. Uh, the real ones will be slightly different for this one. But again, it's fantastic. And the great thing about this one is your weathering because SCAT was always a very weathered aircraft uh, from that part of the world. And again, when you look at the, the real sort of artist drawings of it, you can see that's very much more a natural color for it. And you can see some of the weathering on there like that. Got all your color call outs down here as well. And then the last thing as well on the front here, you've got the mask set. So the mask set itself is this little guy here okay so uh which would be that way around following it you can see they've color coded it which is a nice touch so again you've got the different ones down in here and how they are all going to go right the way through okay so you have got inside and outside masks again i don't know if you're going to be doing that in one centi second but definitely a nice way to do it and also you've got your wheels so again quite nice to get the mask set i've used one very very similar to this i'm not going to say the company because it's probably not the same company but they worked absolutely fantastic on my b17 so very, very happy with that indeed. Okay, the decals themselves, just to see who they are. It says that it's done by Hobby 2000 as well. Again, they actually look very, very nice. To be honest, very Hasegawa-esque, but the carrier film looks pretty minimal. As you can see it on all these parts, it's not giant pieces of carrier film going right the way down. Big thing, obviously these instrument panel ones, they don't look too bad at all, to be honest with you. And in this scale, I would say totally acceptable, no problems. Okay, and then again, obviously the walkway ones looking very, very nice. They're the standard ones. Okay, some of these obviously you're not going to be using, so you've got the slime lines down in here. It's more of a generic thing, as you might know. So again, very nice. Kill markings with the stars up there. And obviously the scat markings going to be going on the nose. So everything you could pretty much want no problem at all in there. So far, very nice. Right, in the kit, as I say, usual way of passing out. If you've ever done reboxings by lots of other companies, if you do them, let's face it, we've seen it in Ravel, we've seen it in uh, Eddard, you know, lots of manufacturers use their ones. So again, it is quite modular. We'll look at the clear part in the moment. So you are gonna get little sprues and things floating around in here. Okay, so let's start with the important ones okay so what of that? see multiple multiple screw screws okay so as you can see it is very modular the way it's going to go together so we've got this front end that goes on and the bottom and things and obviously there's lots of parts in here you're not going to be using so check your references just to make sure so obviously a lot of these down in here in fact all of these i don't think you're using at all okay so again just have a, a bit of a check exactly how you make your way round on it. But as you can see, the great thing about this kit is it has got very, very nice recessed detail. So you've got actually all the panel lines are beautifully done. Being Hasegawa, it's very, very sharp. I call it the chinky plastic because as you can hear it's very, very hard, which means panel lines in that always are uber, uber crisp and very nice indeed. And again, this isn't a spring chicken of a kit, but it is definitely one of the best ones in this scale. Okay, so that's pretty much there and as you can see we've got some bits with all the tail around the clamshell at the back with the heat uh, areas just down by the burner cans very nice indeed and again this is what we're talking about so some of these ones on here like these ones again this is what we were talking about these are for the bridle so you're not going to be using those you're going to be using the ones next to it so again just making sure you get the right versions and again we've got these down in here these are the sort of radar warning receivers obviously uh didn't have it on this particular version okay cockpit is uh, it's devoid of all detail because obviously you're going to be putting that in but we have got side walls so again, it's got that fabric texture in there, which is actually quite a nice touch. And again, various things like instrument panels, nothing to see because it is all decals, as you might imagine, in this scale. Okay, we do get some nice detail though. So underneath here, this is the nose wheel area for the internals. That's not too bad. And again, on the blind side, no real problems. Being Hasegawa though, we do get the odd little eject pin. And again, it's noticeable. You can see down here on the nose wheel half, I can catch it in the light. It's very, very hard to see, but there we go. There's one there and one at the front. So just be wary of those when you're coming through. Okay, but apart from that, no problem at all. Okay, where's the nose? The nose is always a nice one. Okay, so here we have the 
the actual nose and again catching it in the light it's a little bit difficult but you can see beautiful detail and you haven't got have the nose on which is always can be a lover area for phantoms very nicely done no problem at all and again this is that underside plate where beautiful detail takes a wash absolutely gorgeous no problem at all okay very nice indeed another area as you can see we've got multiple sort of uh, instrument panels so make sure you've got the right one but generally very nice again this is one of those kits you need to spend a little bit of time test fitting to ensure a better fit in there wing section so as you can see right off the bat we can zip it around this way we've got the gear doors all looking very nice three-piece gear doors we've got the main underside you can see nice detail in the wheel wells beautiful recessed details all on the underside and on the tops of the wings as well that is all very very nice indeed again you do find the odd little ejector pin though unfortunately in the wheel wells you are going to have to deal with this is typical sort of 90s hasagawa kits the way they were in those days okay so that's something to look out for okay so making our way through we've got sprue p so this is for the actual uh, drop tanks and a lot of the small parts on here we have got a little bit of flash moving around on the clear but again it's very fine flash that isn't going to take too much to get rid of uh, we've got the outer uh, fuel tanks or the ferry tanks on there like that and then obviously we've got the aerial and again some of this stuff like this aerial here is for actually for the d i do believe uh, we've got the nose wheels again obviously different ones different versions things like that we've got the gear and again the gear's never not that bad that's pretty nice but again there is the odd little ejector pin mark here and there all over them okay okay so we got two of these sprues here these are identical uh, on s and again we've got the sorry these are the outer tanks the smaller tanks okay so again looking around you can see we've got some very nice parts on here okay so you've got the gear we've got the cans for the actual engines if we bend it down we can have a look you do have nice detail internally as well so what's nice with these kits and again, different types of wheels as well. We've got the heavy wheel and the light wheel, depending from the Navy and the Air Force versions. Parts of the seats there, all the various bits on this one, as you can see. And then over here, we've actually got the pylons. So again, nicely done on there. And again, we get two of those, obviously a match pair. And then down in here, we have the actual intakes on J. So you can see gorgeous detail, very sharp, as we've always said on these. And then you've obviously got the uh, the intakes. So these are actually sort of deflector doors which open up, which slows the airflow down to the engine when it's going very, very quickly. Okay, so those are actually beautifully modeled and done with that short grill effect on those as well. So that's very nice indeed. We've got the tailplanes with the strengthening brackets in there as well. Okay, the undersides again, beautifully done. They'll be painted up, looking very, very nice. And we've got the wingtip outers again. So it wouldn't be too much if you want to do a folded up version. Okay, and then obviously down in here, we've got some of the, the nose receivers. And I think this one's the blunt one. Which one does this one use? I can't remember now. One of these it will use. So they're all slightly different shaped and got different edges on them and everything. I have a feeling, I don't think you actually use that one because he's got the extra bits underneath. I think it's the early one, so it's here with the C, which actually just has this one. Okay, so that's very nice indeed. Last up, we've got the clear parts. Okay, so from a clear part point of view, okay they usually are very nice you get a little bit of distortion but purely because of the scale but as you can see on this nose one over here that's really nice good clear clean okay we've got some of the various parts on here as well for lights and various things and again but the main ones very very nice uh, and again sometimes we see them in 70 second where it's literally just a closed version but with this we've actually got it so you can have it in open version which is really nice indeed there you have it. To be honest, it's actually quite a bit of a flashback for me because I've built quite a few of these kits years ago um, in 72nd when I used to do a lot of 72nd work and it was one of those kits that you sort of go to because it was the only one, okay? And again, there is other kits out there. Academy do a 72nd one now, but that's more of a, a snap type kit. And again, some of the details, it's got more details, but I don't think they're quite as nicely done. So that's actually what makes this kit really very, very nice. Yes, it's modular, it's a Phantom. They were all like that in the day. These days were a little bit more sport the way with injection molding and the way kits come out. They tend to be a little bit more together, shall we say. But again, like I said, when we were looking at the instructions, if you take your time, do a little bit of test fitting with it, 
it's actually perfect because many a time that I've actually taken that little bit of extra time as we were saying, popped it together, extra thin, welded it up, and I haven't had to do anything to it. It has been actually a perfect fit. But it does take a little bit going along there. Say you've got that forward fuselage section and the underside, you need to get that right. But again, spending your time getting in there, a little bit of spreaders in some areas, squeezing it together in others, okay, get it perfect, then come in with your glue. And as say, if you use an extra thin, you can just let the capillary action zip round it. You won't even have to touch it afterwards. Again, and then putting that forward fuselage on, taking your time, getting those intakes on, taking your time, and that thing. Once that's all done and you spent maybe another hour fiddling around with it just to get it right, it will save you so much time later on and actually you end up with a solid phantom that is all there ready to go straight into primer, into your paintwork and then so forth and so on. It's no problem. It just looks a lot more complicated than it is and even as I'm talking about it, it sounds complicated. It's not. Just take your time with it. It's one of those kits. Spending a bit of time early will save you a lot of time later on, okay? And that is really the key to these kits, getting them right and making them go together well. Anyway, that is the Hobby 2000 172nd F4C.